Hello beautiful people, thank you for coming back to LJ videos and joining me for this video today. Um, I'm actually really excited because this is something that is very different from what we've been doing. I'm actually at a friend's house today um, and we're looking at all his reptiles. This is Dark Eye, um, this is a Doom Rolls boa um, and it's a boy. Um, and we are just going to go basically take a tour of his reptile room um, and see what he's got. He's got some really cool stuff. I'm really excited to share it with you guys and just hear all the fun stories um, on how they got them and everything like that because they're definitely an interesting group of guys. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and start on that journey. It goes from there. <laughs> so. I've honestly always done it at my house, okay. so this is way different. <laughs> it's always in my reptile room. Very interesting. So we are here um, in their reptile room um, and Dan is going to give us a tour basically through everything that they have. You can see they have a lot of mysterious enclosures in here. It's like a huge shed with just a bunch of fun, exciting things. Dan and I work together at Croc Encounter. Say hi, Dan. Hello. So this is very cool to finally see all their animals. What are we starting with here? I thought this one was my favorite. Yes. I found her at Pinellas County Reptiles. Which is where I used to work, coincidentally enough. I always wanted a tegu, but I always wanted a lizard that didn't get too big, but got big enough. And so I thought, why not? So this is Pariah, she's a female. She's about a year and a half old. Now, tegus come from Central and South America. Now, they are primarily omnivores. <laughs> so, in captivity, what I like to feed them is a lot of fruits and vegetables. And then, they love eating a lot of meat, like ground turkey, ground chicken, beef, eggs, and they also like fish and shrimp as well. Now she is a female, so the biggest that females get is like three and a half, four feet. Males are gonna get about four and a half, five feet and about 10 to 20 pounds, sometimes 30, but that's pretty rare. If they're fat. Yep. And their signature thing is this little burn spot on their nose. It's like a little smudge they have. That's why she's called a blue tegu. It's just the look, just the color morph. <laughs> of the black and white. Now, interesting thing about tegus is we do have an invasive population here in South Florida. Yep. We also do have them up here in Hillsborough County in the Tampa area as well. Um, issues that they're causing is they like to eat eggs. So sometimes I'll actually go up to an American crocodile nest in the wild or alligator nest and eat the eggs. And they'll, sometimes I'll eat some of our native animals as well. Well, she's got a really cool little basking platform here. I'm assuming that's a power sun on top, right? Uh, UVB. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These are actually the same guys that are going to be breeding Cronky Boy. Uh, he is in this little bin. This is what I transported him in. So this will be what he's staying in for the time being. And his girlfriend resides in there. But we'll get to her later because obviously we'll make our rounds. All right. This turtle will be getting an upgrade. This is a female red-eared slider. Now we just got her a week ago. We just randomly found her on the side of the road at where I work. Oh, she's so, so we decided cute. to keep her. What's her name? Uh, doesn't have one. Yet. Doesn't have one yet. But this is a little red eared slider. Now, these guys are omnivorous, so sometimes they will eat fruits and vegetables, but primarily they like to eat a lot of fish, shrimp. Which is what is in the water. Pretty much. I just <laughs> clean it up because she's not too hungry. And an interesting thing about aquatic turtles, especially this species, is you can distinctively tell the males apart from the females. So this is a female. Females are always gonna have these short little claws, whereas a male, the claws would be twice as long. Now, if you're curious about how, how hard they bite, yeah, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I was about to say, come on now. So yeah, and this is full grown for a female. Sometimes they can get about five to seven pounds. And they've got the same light requirements. They do require the UVB and the heat, so that's just built in one bowl. Give them a little basking area, but most of the time they will chill underwater. As you can see. <laughs> We've got the hand sanitizer. <laughs> it's the most valuable thing here. She's so cool. Living little turtle life. All right. I love this enclosure before he even starts because it's literally, we actually just gave him some isopods from the isopod breeding project, I guess, we've been doing for some time now. So we're gonna be putting the isopods in there and it's gonna become a fully bioactive paludarium. So it's really pretty. They have the pothos plant and just a lot of decorations. This is like ideal tank for me. And then in here, we have one of her favorites. My favorites. <laughs> so 
So this is Apollo. Apollo is just a seven month old baby Argentinian red tegu lizard. Now he's similar to Pariah, it's just a different species. So when he becomes full grown, he'll be a lot bigger than Pariah because he is a male and his whole skin color will turn bright red. And he's already such a pretty coloration. And they do get the signature jowls, which are those big pockets of fat that they get on the side of their faces. And the males will get those a lot bigger than the females will. So when he's big and full grown, he's gonna have quite the fat face. And he does like to hide a lot. Typical. Hide. Gave him some turkey too earlier, so that's probably why he's residing under that. He's like, I'm fat and happy. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm taking that for the next couple of hours. And he currently lives in a 20 gallon. When he gets bigger, he'll probably be going into this enclosure, which is not yet done yet. And then when he gets bigger than Pariah, he's gonna be have to be upgraded to a much larger enclosure. She's out now. Pariah. She's like, I've been moved, I am basking. <laughs> I like this enclosure as well. They have a lot of cool different enclosures. Um, I like love this one. I obviously stated I love this. This is super cool for turtles. Um, and both of these are just really awesome setups, and so is that one too. So this right here, this is Darkai. Darkai is a male Dumeril's boa. Now these guys come from the island of Madagascar and they are only found on that island. Now they are critically endangered in the wild, but here in captivity, there's a healthy population in all breeding places. So they're not that hard to find in captivity. So that's why anyone can own them. And this is the same one you saw when I started the video. He was hanging out with me. Um, and they're really cool because unlike most boas, they are slow growers, so they do take almost twice the time it takes to get full size as a normal boa, say like a red tail or something. Now they get pretty big, but they don't get as big as a red tail boa. Now male Dumeril boas like him usually get about four and a half to six feet long. Um, he's about five feet now, so he'll get a little bit bigger, but not too much. And the females usually get between seven to nine feet long. They're super pretty. I've always liked their patterns. And an interesting thing about this species is, and with all boas, they give live birth. They don't just lay random eggs. They actually lay a very slimy yolk sac, and that usually has the baby inside of it. Once the baby pops its head out of that little sac, that's when it takes its first breath. That's why I've always liked boas. They make such an easier breeding process. Oh yeah, you know what? They don't have to spend months incubating eggs. Yep, worrying about the right humidity levels, worrying about the right temperature, anything like that. She does all the work herself. So this is the one and only. This is Krong's girlfriend. When I say she's beautiful, my friends, man oh man, I'm not kidding. I have never held or seen such a pretty carpet in person before. Look at that. She is stunning. Let's see if I can bring her out. Look at that. She wasn't as feisty. Oh, <laughs> just kidding. Come on, Lynx. It's the game. There you go. Her name is Lynx, obviously, as you heard him say, which is evident. We'll show you her face. Right. She's beautiful. So this is Lynx. Now Lynx is an Australian carpet python. Um, she is actually what you call a color morph or color mutation. Her mutation is a jaguar. Her true actual species is just a jungle carpet python. Now these guys come from Australia. Now males usually get about five to seven feet long and about 10 to 15 pounds. Females will get a lot bigger, around 15 to 20 pounds and around eight to nine feet, sometimes 10 feet. And she's around five and a half, six feet long. And she's stunning. I love her. So once Kronk is done shedding, which is what we're just waiting on before we put them together because he is in the last couple days of his shed, um, then they will get to pair together and we will let the magic happen. Here you go, mama. She's like, don't mind if I do. She's so pretty. I just love the contrast on her. Oh, she just finished shedding yesterday too. Yep, that's the shed right up here. <laughs> we just hung that up earlier. All right, so in here, we have two boa constrictors. Wow, look at them. The smaller gorgeous. one is the male, and the bigger one's the female. Now, these are red-tailed boas. They're both about over five feet. Now, these guys come from Central and South America. They are the largest of all the boa species in the world. Females usually get between nine to 12 feet long, and sometimes about 50 to 100 pounds. Now, I know most boa people out there wouldn't believe 100 pounds is possible, but trust me, it's possible. <laughs> We've seen it. <laughs> And then males usually stay smaller, about six and a half, seven feet, and usually about 10 to 20 pounds. And this is where Aro fits in. Aro is the same snake as these guys, 
Obviously, he's just older, so he's bigger. Our constrictors, and what that means is how they kill their prey. So let's say if I were to put a rat in that enclosure, so either one of these snakes will strike at the rat, wrap around it, and they would squeeze it until the until that rat stops breathing. Once that rat stops breathing, they will start consuming it. They're the closest we can get here in Florida to retics and burns. Oh yeah. <laughs> Tweedledee and Tweedledum are coming up the stairs. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you got three little sizes. Oh my goodness, um, they caught. Can, we can feed the vine snakes. So. Yeah. They caught lizards, guys. I'm kind of sad that these yeah. poor little lizards hey, are being well, sacrificed today. They're invasive anyway. <laughs> so that was oh, great. God. Yeah, he stepped in a pile. <laughs> so honestly, what's my favorite part of this is they have vine snakes which are super, super cool. I've never even seen them eat. Oh. They're Cheech and Sean, guys. <laughs> oh, there he is, he's, he's clear now. Thanks for cooperating and put your head in front of the leaf. They're just cool, I really like them. I, I love them. Like, when a, upon buying them, I didn't know it was gonna be like this actual, like, I figured it was gonna be sweet, but I didn't mm -hmm. think it was gonna be so cool. Just the idea of feeding lizards mm -hmm. is pretty cool, even though I like lizards. <laughs> because oh, there's, because normally they chase them. put a layer of rocks down and then I made this kind of a wall and then there's more rocks down there and then we put dirt but it overflowed so Corey put more rocks there and now we have the dirt kind of where I want I'm hoping the isopods that you gave me are gonna for um, sure be able to hang out there they're known for being super super intelligent oh no he's really smart I actually was able to hand feed him a, a, uh, a fishy yep yeah. He doesn't like being held very much until you like really calm them down. Their heads are very cool too. Yeah. That's cool because like they'll try to, I'm sure you know this, but they are mimics for the water moccasins. So people thinking that they're going to mm -hmm. bite them and hurt them so they can kind of get away. I just like all the tiger bands that they have. Yep. It's super cool. We found a couple that were so red. Oh, it, yeah, it was, red it was insane. They were red like on their sides? Yeah, like bright red. Yeah, we, we had never seen it before. It was really cool. He's a little bit faded, but and I They're love awesome. the, the keeled. Is yes, cool. I always have loved the keeled scales. Those are my favorite. He's probably my favorite. Just because I love the whole thing. It's got, I have minnows in here that just gave birth, and then there's a couple crayfish, and then I have these baby placostomus. Oh, huh? so you're really all self-sustaining here. Yeah, and uh, we got algae supplements for them. But he'll hunt the, I try to hand feed him every once in a while just because it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. But um, he'll hunt all the fish by himself. I just keep restocking it. We'll That's go out awesome. by the lake and catch like 10 or 12 of them and then just dump them in here. Looks good. I it's love this tank. This is a goal for me to have something yeah. like this. Maybe for a garter. Oh, that'd be, that'd be sick. Really yeah, these guys are super cool too. Oh, and there we go. Little yeah, little snappers. Crush and brazaca. Crush and what? Brazaca. What an interesting name. It's actually uh, one of Steve Irwin's friends that he then named a crocodile after. That's very cool. I did not know that. And I love them. These guys are. This one's much bigger. They just got a cool little log. This is my yellow anaconda imposter. <laughs> He's a spotted python. Also. Uh, I'm, I've always wondered if, because a lot of people say the children's python is the same thing as the spotted python. I was going to say they do look a lot like the children's mm -hmm. python. But I don't really know for sure. They're in Australia, a lot more uh, terrestrial than the boreal. Mm -hmm. But they do tend to climb. And I just feed them like about three rat pinkies each week. 
but um, he should get about five feet. How He'll soon? be cool once he gets bigger. Oh yeah, and then I want to get—he's a male, so I want to get a female just because I want to get pairs for basically everything that I have. When he first brought him out, he literally said anaconda, and I yeah. thought it was an anaconda oh, at first yeah. glance. I looked close, I was like, definitely not, but I wish that would be super cool. He's still really cool though. Mm -hmm. I have not seen you know, any of those uh, around. I when I got him about a year ago, he could fit in that tub that you put the isopods in. Oh, this tub right here. Yeah, he fit in that. <laughs> He was small, a little peewee. He's a little baby. So this is an African black house snake. They call it uh, like the, is it the Mexican milk snake? The big one, that big one? Mexican black king? Yeah, black king. Oh, Mexican black It's like the poor king. man's indigo. <laughs> so this is the poor man's uh, black king snake. And I, it just literally looks like he's cut from marble. Yeah, it, he's he, got cool fading on his mm, sides. And he just, uh, she, he just shed she. it. And uh, when you put them out in the sun, it looks just a, like oil. Like you ever seen oil mixed with water? Yeah. yeah. That's exactly what it looks like all across the skin. That's really cool. Where'd you get this one from? Uh, this was underground reptiles. Okay, okay. I, that's where you got these guys from too, right? Yeah. I, I bought, I was originally, I bought a vine snake in one of these and a, a masked uh, racer, but hmm. they didn't have the racer. So they gave me two vine snakes instead. That is still very cool though. Hopefully they're male and female. That's the That would be amazing. That would be the, the goal here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, and their literally name is just because they're found all the time in uh, the houses in Africa. I like the snakes that most people don't have. See that's not exactly how they're I very am. cool. Have something I, I like ball pythons, but I mean ball pythons, you know it's ball pythons. Yeah, yeah, you can find ball pythons anywhere. Yeah, everyone's got them. I just have the, the rescues and then the really cool albino one. <laughs> Your white snake. <laughs> yeah. I have a white snake in my backyard. I've never seen her do this. She's never wanted to come She's like, she, she knows that the camera's I'm here for the yeah. camera. <laughs> this is my photo shoot. It's like a bunch of unknown boxing. Yeah. Most of them are ball pythons. Uh, like that's the pastel, that's the albino, those are the two uh, rescues, and then that, that's the, uh, those are the rat snakes. And that's the snake we're just dealing with. I just love King Snake. Like I never really was into him, and then him and I started talking about them, yeah. and then I got a couple, and they're just like twitchy, and, and awesome. they're all over the place, yeah. and they got good feeding yeah. responses. They're just cool. Oh, they're Dude. amazing. That's a core, by the way. Oh yeah, <laughs> he's been chilling. <laughs> and I just love the black head. It's just super cool. They literally look like they look blackheads. Like black <laughs> no, exactly why I got them. Yeah. I just, I just like, like I said earlier, I just like having things that most people don't have. Mm -hmm. And it's just. Fun. I've never seen these guys before, honestly. Oh, I saw them at the store and I was like, yep, sold. It's so cool. And when they move fast like that in their patterns, yeah. they look super cool. My, uh, my ball python at home has aliens on them. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We also have Zero right here. He is a Florida king snake. Now this is not the wild type pattern you would find. He's just an annuary color mutation. Now these guys usually get about five to six feet long, but since he is a male, he's, the, he's only gonna get about four and a half, maybe five feet. That's really cool. And these guys are found all throughout Florida. And the interesting thing about king snakes is, is they love to eat other snakes. Hence why they kind of sound like a king cobra, but king snake. Mm -hmm. Do the example come out? Not yet. He's really cool. He reminds me of like a zebra or a cow or something, black and white. And he's only about, what would you say, six months old for him? I'd say so, yeah. He's really small still. I love their face patterns. They always look like they have like the skull like outlines for their teeth yeah. mm -hmm. on the sides of their face. Or it's always remind me of like war paint. Yes, a hundred percent. She's persistent. Yeah, she's never done that before. She's like, let me out! <laughs> and this is the Exantig uh, Brooks King snake. Brooks Kings are super cool. Only found in uh, one part of the, the Everglades. Wow, she really wants yeah, that. She really oh does. She says, if you don't let me out, I'm gonna <laughs> break. Here, really. I'm gonna break this glass. Do you smell me? Do you remember me? I used to feed you. He's really cool. Yeah, he's, he, when I first got him, he was really purple. It's kind of faded a little bit. Um, but it's just 
something about all the, the tinging of the of the scales is just really fascinating to me. Do you smell other snakes on me? Do I smell mm -hmm. like food to you? I just love all the black and white snakes. <laughs> and they will polish off. Oh yeah, as, um, as they get older, they just get better. I just can't wait to find one in the wild, you know? Yeah. yeah. I've never ever seen yeah, a king snake in the wild. Oh yeah. Well, I found that one in the house, yeah. dude. That was cool. This, I worked for wildlife uh, control, and Wait. this lady had had two of them that she cut up with like scissors. Oh my goodness! And I saved the other one, thankfully. And it was kind of funny. He's popping his head up, looked like a little bookworm. <laughs> <laughs> it's really cool. <laughs> That's so cool. We're hopefully going to be going on lots of herping adventures soon. Oh yeah. So. Him and I are probably going to go to Ruth Eckerd later today. Ooh, that'll be cool. We have, a, we have about like 10 boards that we set out there, hoping to be able to like flip them open and find stuff under there. So. Ah, cause my dream, my dream is a mud snake. Oh, I want a yes. mud snake. Have so I ever that. heard of a mud snake? I don't think so. What? Well, Alright, really? someone, someone uh, pull up a mud snake. Oh, yeah. You know what's really cool? The elephant trunk snakes. Yeah, I almost Those did. are amazing. I almost, they I almost, get massive. Yeah. They're they had so a cool. At, at uh, Repticon. The rainbow snakes we have here. Oh no, I ruined the water. You will find the mugs and the rainbows in the same environment as well. Really? These are hard to find, but yeah. Whoa! That's insane. You think those boards will help lure them in? Uh, maybe not mug snakes, but honestly, we're just kind of hoping for whatever. Anything um, really. The only thing I really, there's usually gator, there's a couple of gators there that I've um, seen, and then there's a bunch of frogs there as well. Typical. And then we found a giant, like, Big old uh, Big common snapping turtle. Snapping turtle yeah. Oh my goodness. Yep. You find salamanders too? No, not yet. Not yet? Not really? Yeah, that's what we're trying <laughs> I would do. expect that. I feel like they're everywhere. Any... Since I moved down here, I've never seen a salamander. Up north, they're everywhere. The boards have also only really been down for, let me say, like a couple weeks. Yeah, a couple weeks. Um, a couple months from now, it should be a turn, it should turn out pretty good. Yeah. Sure that'll... So we just confirmed their sexes <laughs> right before we did this. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> They're both, yeah, they're both females. Now, th these two, along with my little pastel down there, they were um, abandoned in an apartment. Uh, the pastel was actually in a shoebox, and there was a bearded dragon in there, as well as, um, look, see, to me, these always look like aliens. Oh yes, they do look like aliens. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, I have a pie that has a heart on the side of it. Oh really? Yep. Oh, that's awesome. Yep. So uh, my buddy, who's also in animal control, called me, and I was able to take them. Well, they're in good care now. Oh yeah. Healthy, getting fed. And they eat like champs. <laughs> I need a new hide though. <laughs> You've outgrown this one. Got too thick. Yeah. <laughs> Damn boy, she thick. <laughs> so that's just a regular corn. That's Hudson. Much different than Adara, obviously. This is apparently a red rat snake, but it has a morph, I guess, called an Aztec. Okay. So you can see similarities to that one and uh, to the regular one, but you can see how it uh, differs. Yeah, it's much browner. Mm -hmm. And then it's kind of got this like stripe down the I was middle. about to say, I mm -hmm. see that like cool. Can you make a jug? I'm gonna water in here. Cool pattern. They're cool because they get up like five feet. And, and they do have uh, that same belly pattern too that Adara has. They got the cool yeah, checkered. Yeah, the checkered board yeah. is sick. I love that. Nah, it's, it's funny, I got your hair like three eight pounds. <laughs> <laughs> I shed. Yeah. I shed a lot. You're like a German Shepherd. Pretty much. Except it's a lot more annoying because it's yeah. like 15 times the length. <laughs> oh, I was about to say, you understand. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, we'll be driving and I get whipped. Yeah, it gets everywhere. <laughs> you understand my pain. Now this one, I, uh, I was on my way to Lando Lakes and I got a phone call about, hi, there's um, like a white snake in my backyard. <laughs> I don't know if, you, if you're familiar with Florida, but we don't typically have white snakes. So I did a real quick U-turn and headed back. And sure enough, this was in just some lady's backyard. Just an albino bull python. Yeah. His name's Olaf Moon. We were both trying to think of like white snakes in Florida yeah. that we could possibly, you Maybe know, a yeah. Snake, I guess. Yeah, I guess some crazy morph that somehow exists. Yeah. But he's just a really. Muted out albino. He's so cute though. 
When we got him, he actually had a respiratory infection. Now, he was found in the winter. I think you caught him in November. Yeah. So I talked talk to my boss because I do work at a reptile sanctuary and she told us what to do. So what, basically what we did is we put him in a 20 gallon tank, we put a heat pad underneath with paper towels, and then we put a heat lamp on top of it and she told us to basically like bake the snake. <laughs> now to be honest, I didn't really think that would work, but surprisingly enough, two weeks later, it worked. Mm -hmm. And his respiratory was completely Ceramic gone. heater on top and then a heating pad underneath. Perfect. I have a tilt okay gecko in there, but trying to get him out, probably it's, not gonna happen. Yeah, it's MIA, but cool tank. <laughs> It's okay, Gecko! <laughs> this is Kink. Baby. She's just a normal ball python. She's about three months old. She's gonna be cobra food. Yeah, she was gonna be cobra food. We went to Repticon Aww. and they had her labeled as an imperfect ball python. Now, the only thing imperfect about her was I'm she, just has a, kink. she just has a little tiny kink at the end of her tail. See, that's so frustrating. That yeah. is like. <laughs> This is actually his nephew snake. They actually bought it for Aww. like $25. Well, I'm glad that they saved it. Yeah. That's, so I think we did everything, right? Yeah, they have to go Like I said, they have a lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So do you. False water cobras. I do have um, Yeah, they're going to get some false water cobras. Yeah, I, I can't wait. This thing is what else are we hoping for? Um, for my, my birthday's in December, and I have money put away. I'll oh. get two uh, yellowtail creepos. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's a creep. I wanted an indigo, and that was before I found out you need a license for it. Yep. So now I want to get a creepo because I just like the bigger body fast moving snakes. They're gorgeous. There. That's yeah. very cool, though. Eventually, my goal in the future is to have every single species that is in Florida. It's quite the feat. Uh, it's about 75 species. That would be very um, cool. But just because people can come and learn about each species that they encounter. Yeah, and that's that you come across in the I was about to say, it's life. definitely important. Yeah. They, like, with the whole new laws passing, they're trying to not even educate people about the species. Yeah. And it's like, shouldn't this it people... Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, that's like the whole pit bull thing. Yep. Like, if you don't yeah. understand it, of course it's going to be scary. No, yeah, yeah. You have to actually do some research. Especially you should know about it, considering you could yeah. encounter it Absolutely. while you're yeah. walking outside. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. So it's a big lizard. But it's not that big. But you kiss her on the face unless she's pissed off that day. I mean, even then, she's really not going to bite. Yeah. She might bite me because I scared her. So. <laughs> Mind, and they're very easy, you know, as she, um, I don't know if I shared the story about her, but she actually, he got, Dan got her from Pinellas County Reptiles, <laughs> and um, we had her since she was a baby, we actually had her at the store for about a year, and no one bought her, and she got quite an attitude and defensiveness in her enclosure anytime we went in there, and she bit not only a customer, but she bit one of my coworkers pretty bad, um, and now you can see she's a complete puppy dog, so it really just takes someone's time and energy and to... Yeah, she already flipped it like twice. <laughs> but now she's a complete puppy dog. It just takes someone to give the time and attention to, you know, work with her. She's so cool. It really makes me happy considering, like I said, I saw how she used to be and I saw the enclosure she was in. Oh, she saw that mouth open real quick. She's like, snack? <laughs> snack? <laughs> But it's so cool to see her in such a big enclosure. And I know how good of care Dan takes with his animals. And all these guys take care of their animals very well. <laughs> she said, Dad, I won't snack. Well, I know Ben went down. But I want to say thank you for the reptile tour. It was very much appreciated. This is very cool. You're welcome to any time. It's cool to see anybody else's enclosure set up and animals rather than my own. <laughs> So this is very cool. So guys, that kind of concludes the video for today. Um, it was a lot of fun to make, a lot of fun to just hear them talk about their animals. It was really cool to just see somebody else's animals besides my own um, and just see the kind of cool creatures they keep um, and they all are in such great health. So it's really cool to see other people taking great care of their animals and just to see other people share the same passion as I do. It's always cool, especially meeting Dan. Um, I've known him for quite some time now um, and meeting his friends and they're really cool too. So we're definitely gonna be doing some herping adventures soon and I think it'd be really fun for you guys to join along. So I'll definitely be getting footage of that and some other cool footage because he does have a GoPro and he'll help me with mine because I do have one as well. If you really enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Um, and if you wanna see when I post next, hit that notification bell. Um, and as always, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, whatever in the world it could possibly be, uh, drop a comment down below. Um, 
Yeah, I'm just so excited about this video. I can't contain my excitement. I'm like smiling from ear to ear, as you can obviously tell, just because this was such a cool thing. I had a fun day today. Um, I was honestly here for approximately like four hours, um, which I, it flew by, it was super fun. So if you guys are watching this, um, any of the three of you, thank you again. I already know I said thank you, but I'm excited to see how Kronk and his girlfriend turn out and if they lock and everything like that. I am told them I'm gonna have some separation anxiety from leaving my boy here, but I know they'll take great care of him. So thank you again for joining me today. This was super fun. More, plenty more of stuff like this to come. Um, I'm excited to join that journey and have that journey with you guys, but I'll see you guys next time. Bye.